Hello people. So let's begin. First off, we're going to need the assets. Uh, I'll put the link of my of this itch.io page in the description. You'll just have to click on it and then go down and press download now. Say just no thanks. Uh, just take me uh, to the downloads and you'll able you will be able to download it right there. Then you can open your file and drop your file on your desktop then open it take the assets pack and drop it on your desktop again this way then uh, we can import them into godot so you can just slide the assets packs into godot just like that uh, yep so now it's importing the assets once they're all important uh, we can um, organize them uh, as we would like so Let's take all the audio files and put them into our own audio file. Uh, then all all these uh, cliff props, enemy uh, tavern props, all the .glb files, props, enemy cliff props. I want them into model. Good. And the two sprites. Let's just put them into sprites, and we can delete the assets back once it's empty. So now uh, we, we imported all the assets that we needed. If you have any error messages, just press on this little icon. It will clear them. Uh, everything should be working fine. Now we can begin making our world. Uh, first off, we could add a simple tavern, slide the tavern and press on the tavern. So you'll see the arrows and the circles. So you'll be able to move and rotate uh, the object. If uh, when you press on the tavern, it doesn't do anything, probably that you pressed by accident on um, a mode. So if it's on the move mode, you won't be able to click on something else than the object already selected. So you're gonna have to press on the select mode or press on Q. So now when you press on different objects, it selects them. Good. So now we get the simple tavern. Uh, we can press play because I, I have something to show you. So this model already has a collider. I made it with Blender and I made it in a way that the collider is already imported uh, by default into Goldot. So you won't have to mess with the collider. It's already uh, in the model. But for the other model, you're going to have to add your own collider. Not all the models, but a few models. So let's begin by adding cliffs. So all around our beautiful ground, we want to have uh, cliffs. So there's a limitation to our world. Uh, in order to do this, we're going to add a static body 3D because cliffs will have collisions. We're going to call it a uh, cliff and then very simple. We're going to add uh, cliff props into it. So open the cliff props uh, folder and just slide a cliff, a cliff prop into the world. Uh, as you can see, the cliff prop is not a child of the static body, but it doesn't really matter. We'll change it later. We can just press on it and slide it in. Now it's a child. It's OK but each uh, cliff prop uh, that you'll add, it won't uh, be automatically as a children. So we're gonna have to move it manually, but it won't be uh, complicated. I'll show you, uh, you can select many object, uh, objects at once, uh, either by pressing control or by pressing shift. So let's just begin by making uh, a first side of the cliff. So pretty straightforward. You put down uh, cliff props, you move them, and you you rotate them, I mean, and you move them to the desired position. So uh, this way, for example. And now I'm just going to speed that up a bit because it will take a, f a, a bit of time and I won't have anything to teach you uh, during that time. So I'll just speed that up while I make uh, one side of a, the cliff. So good. Now that I have a one side done, we'll just duplicate this side and put it on every other side. 
So first off, I'll just make sure all the cliff props are in the, the static body 3D. I'm gonna press on the first one of the list, just go down to the last one, maintain a shift and click on the last one. It will select them all. Then we can just maintain a mouse one, left mouse button and slide them into cliffs. Now we can select them all. Same thing, shift click. Now we get all of them selected and we can press control D. This will duplicate them. So now you can just move it and every single um, cliffs prop will be um, duplicated. I can rotate them on the Y axis. This way it will be on the other side and I can just slide it right there. Nice. Uh, let's do it again. It was until 22, I think, 23 or 24. Good. Uh, I'll just unselect the two corner piece uh, because there's already one there. Uh, but I'll do the same thing. Control D. I'll move it to the center, rotate it, put it back there, make sure it fits well. Good. And then I'll select this one again, except the corner piece. Control D, slide it to the middle, rotate it, slide it to its place. So now we got our whole cliffs. We can press on play and test it. And as you can see, we get a beautiful cliff all around our world. Uh, let's just make a little test. Boom, there's no collisions. Oh no, let's add them. So to add them, it's gonna be very, very simple. It's gonna be the exact same thing as we did with uh, the floor. We're gonna go and add a collision shape 3D as the child of cliffs. We're gonna add a box shape 3D then the box shape 3D, we're gonna move it to the side and we're going to scale it. So uh, if you remember, the floor is 40 by 40. So I can just say 40, oh, it's in the right one. I can just say 40 on the Z and it should be as wide as our ground. It is not the case. I don't know what, why? Oh, so it was really 50 by 50. Okay, we got a 50 by 50 floor, I guess. Okay, good. And the height, the height, let's set it to uh, five meters and just slide the collider. So it's it's in line with most of the rocks. This is fine, I think. And we can just press on the collision shape and do the same thing as we, di uh, as we did with the cliffs and just control D and slide it to the other side. Make sure the, coll the collision is in line with the rocks. Control D, rotate, rotate, and then make sure it's in line with the rocks. And Control D to the other side. And now we should have perfectly working collisions. If we go and walk towards the cliffs, boom, there's perfectly working collisions. For sure the collision isn't perfect. I mean, right there, I can see that I'm not touching, but it doesn't matter. It's an indie game, a very small indie game. Nobody cares. It's perfectly fine for the purpose of this tutorial. Good. Now, one more thing we can add is uh, trees. So we're gonna make a new node, a new static body 3D. We're gonna call it uh, three, and we're going to save it, save branch as scene, go into objects, tree, save it, open the scene, and let's add a collision, and let's add our pine3.glb. Uh, once it's added, make sure that in the transforms of the pine tree, everything is at zero, 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 zero. Now we got our beautiful pine tree, press on collision shape, add a capsule shape, and just put it right there. It's it's going to be perfectly fine. Uh, there won't be collisions on the top of the tree, but it doesn't matter because our player won't ever uh, fly. So it's perfectly fine, just like that. So now we got the perfectly working tree and we can place a few of them. So just go into objects and slide a few trees in our world. And this one is, it might be too close to the border. Good, just like that. Perfect, we got many trees and I can collide with them 
and it works perfectly fine. Uh, now for the trees, let's create a node, a 3D node. We're just gonna call it uh, trees and we're gonna put every single tree into trees. This way it will keep our uh, scene uh, well organized. Then there's one more thing, very cool, that we're gonna do. Uh, we're going to add grass. So it will be very easy. First off, uh, we're gonna make sure our grass.glb becomes a grass.mesh. Um, so we're gonna double click on it. It will open the advanced import options. You can see this is our grass. Uh, it's normal that you, we don't see it on every side. It's because of the normals. Uh, a quad a quad mesh only has one face showing. Uh, there's ways to show both faces, but we don't need them. So we're just gonna go into meshes, grass plane, and we're gonna press on save to file enabled. And we're gonna select our path. It can be model and we're just going to rename it grass, press save and press on re-import. Now we got, we got a grass.res. Go into our scene, press on floor, add a new child. A new child. It will be multi-mesh instance 3D. We're going to create a new multi-mesh, press on multi-mesh and in mesh, we're going to slide our grass mesh. Why did we do that? Uh, as you can see, the multi-mesh only accepts meshes. So we couldn't put our grass.glb because it's a model, not a mesh. And grass.res is a mesh, so it works. Uh, then, uh, why a multi-mesh instance? The multi-mesh instance is a, a, a node that will allow us to generate a lot of mesh, so a of mesh instance, but in a single pack. So it will send a single pack of information to our GPU. And so we, we, the CPU won't have to send multiples uh, rendering calls. Um, good. So then how do we set it up? We're just gonna press on the multi-mesh button right there. Press on populate surface. The target surface will be our mesh instance tree under floor, so it's our floor. Our resource mesh is the mesh that we already set there, so you can remove the two dots. Uh, you can put random rotation, so uh, it, they will rotate uh, randomly. And now the amount. Uh, you can populate with a lot of instance without adding any, any lag. So let's go for like 30,000. We, we could even go higher, but we can also go lower if you have a very, very bad PC. Maybe just start with 2,000. But if you if you have a high-end high PC, you can go with like 50,000 easily. Uh, let's go with 50,000. Good. So now, as you can see, we get 50,000 little grass, grass uh, meshes. You can make sure uh, it's at the right height because it, it may hide the grass a bit but you can change the height. So just put it this height. Maybe this seems, this seems okay. Uh, also on, right now the grass is uh, white. It will be easy to change the color. Just press on geometry, material override, press on the empty and new standard material, press on the material and then go into albedo and go make yourself a beautiful green like that. This seems uh, perfectly fine for me. And then we can press play. Good. So we got grass in our world. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to go into post-processing post and adding shadows and stuff like that. And also adding a sky. I mean, not a sky, but just making the sky not gray. <laughs> uh, so we're going to enhance the graphics a lot. See you then.